But Ben, what do you think of uh, Thanos? Uh, so Thanos is super cool. Um, there's a bunch of really interesting uh, features that it has, and like basically the way it integrates with Prometheus 2.0 is just like absolutely perfect because it's really simple to integrate. Um, basically, you drop this extra like sidecar binary with your Prometheus server, uh, and it creates a mesh cluster that allows you to, a single query interface to query all of your production Prometheus servers all through one interface, which is just way, way, way easier. So like this, and this, this is kind of part of the, like the original idea of Prometheus was we wanted to make really easy to get into, but you know, there are complex problems for bigger organizations that can't be solved with a single Prometheus server. So like as GitLab has grown, we went from having one big Prometheus server set up to now we have one just for the Rails app, and then we have one just for each of the um, uh, the runner clusters. So each of the runner clusters has its own Prometheus server. And then we're like, well, the database stuff is getting too big, so let's move the database metrics to their own Prometheus server. Uh, and oh, well, there's now one in the GCE install, and that's separate from the one in the Azure install. So we need to, like, we want to time all together. So really all we need to do is install Thanos, and then having to figure out which server to pick is no longer a problem because you just query Thanos, and Thanos routes the query to the right Prometheus server. Um, and then also, like, as we've been growing, we keep having to increase the size of the disk storage on each of the Prometheus servers because, like, one, a 1T one disk was too small, now a 2T disk is too small, now a 3T disk is being okay, but like, why can't we just store all that data somewhere else? We, why does it have to be on the Prometheus server? Well, Thanos, the Thanos sidecar can ship the extra storage that is like months old, and it can ship that into a bucket storage like S3 or Google uh, Cloud Storage uh, or whatever you happen to have. So yeah, it's like it looks really cool. Like it can yeah. use the offsets. You don't have to like go go back and, and download the thing. Yeah, and, and it still uses the, each of the individual Prometheus servers to send all the alerts. So that, you know, Thanos it might be broken or, or down or, you know, because it's clustered, so it gets complicated quick. Uh, and like clustered software is always really complicated, but the individual Prometheus servers are still able to send all their alerts and they don't actually depend on the Thanos server. That's only for the dashboards and like analytics and things. So like uh, the important thing, the important, uh, component is still running and operating, uh, and the, the the extra component is extra. Uh, so it's like it's a really good design, and it it's uh, it kind of mirrors a little bit about um, about like the idea that Prometheus should work when everything else is on fire. Um, so yeah. I'm the the easiest thing for someone would have to be like, oh, all this all this local data will make some massive thing here and it's going to be HA and everything. Yeah. And, and, and that's like the common pitfall. And this, this seems like it's, it's kind of, it, it can deal it, with, with all kinds of things uh, falling, falling over. Yeah. And like the, the original, the original uh, uh, long-term storage Prometheus is called Cortex. Uh, and, uh, and it's based on having like a big table or a Cassandra cluster behind it. And it's much more complicated to run, uh, and it's a little more. Uh, it's I wouldn't say it's more fragile, but it's 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 more work to do. Um, and and it and it requires a, a much more persistent connection to the individual Prometheus servers because it uses the remote write pattern. But with the Thanos sidecar, it use, it takes the the time series blocks and it just R syncs them up to your storage. So, uh, basically, so it, it doesn't need to like it doesn't need to be online all the time. So you can you can actually have your Thanos go down and then come back up, and like not lose anything. Yeah, and you just it, look at what the latest blocks were yeah. that were written down, and you upload those. Yep, but it's really new, so that, you know we're still getting used to it, and like making like we there haven't there hasn't actually been any official releases of it, so it's just like compile from master and away you go. So it's, it's still a little experimental. So we're still working on, like the, the, the people that are working on the Thanos uh, software are still you know, working on it. So cool. uh, do you think this is, this is the one? Uh, it's, it's the one, it's, it's the one for a 
uh, an internal organization's use. Uh, Cortex is actually still really awesome if you're trying to create like a hosted Prometheus service. Uh, so like if you've got a bunch of uh, like, so right now the Thanos requires like bi-directional communication which, with each of the Prometheus servers, uh, which doesn't work so great if you have like uh, a very widely distributed NAT, you know, a bunch of Prometheus servers that are out behind uh, firewalls and stuff where you need to ship that data home to a central service. Uh, Cortex is still really good for that. It's like if you're if you're an organization with a with like random Prometheus servers installed on random customer locations, uh, Cortex might still be good for that. And it's like if say GitLab uh, wanted to have hosted Prometheus, we would probably we would probably want to run a Cortex cluster as like call home telemetry for. Uh, GitLab.com installations, because uh, that's and that's something that you know uh, we've talked about previously. Uh, so oh, there's there's still there's still a, there's still a use case for 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 doing Cortex, and I think that the Cortex code is a little bit more designed to do like customer to customer separation. Yeah, it's more multi tenant. There's more multi tenancy in it. Yeah, it's interesting. I I think we're just gonna go with like first like get the a GitLab cloud native Helm charts, Prometheus is a part of that, and then start doing this on top. And yep. I think the, the multi-tenant SaaS solution will have to wait a while while we yeah. figure everything out. But but if you want if you're if you're GitLab.com and you want all of your Prometheus servers to look like one big Prometheus server, then uh, Thanos is the way to go. It's like it's, cool. it's different different use cases. Well thanks for the context, man. Yeah. This was uh, Sid, I'm the CEO of GitLab, and Ben, Ben, you wanna? Yeah, I'm Ben, I'm the Prometheus, uh, uh, and uh, actually not Prometheus, but the monitoring team development lead. Awesome, thanks, Ben. Yep. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> a cameo here. <laughs>